Hey everybody, welcome back to Throttle Grotto. This week we have huge fuel system leaks to repair on the 83 GTI and rear disc brakes to put on the 75 Rabbit project. That's all coming up next in this episode of Throttle Grotto. Hey everybody, welcome back. So you might remember last week that uh, we tried to get the fuel system together on the 83 GTI and I failed miserably at it. I had fuel all over the driveway. It was just miserable. It was shooting out of just about every spot that uh, is joined up with the metal washers. So if you're not familiar with the fuel system on these cars, it's CIS, which is uh, Continuous Injection System, I believe is what it stands for. Might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it's CIS. Um, and it runs at about 80 PSI. I think just under 80 PSI is is the system pressure. So what that means is the whole system pressurizes up all the way from the fuel pump all the way to the injectors is running at 80 PSI. So um, if you're if it's not a reference for you, uh, it's 80 pounds per square inch. That's uh, well above what your car tires are. That's uh, almost at the level of a, tr of a, of a uh, semi tire. Um, I don't really have any way I can reference 80 PSI other than that but uh, it's pretty high pressure. Most of the newer cars will run in the 40s. So it's almost double uh, what uh, like a Digifont system runs at about four, I think 45 PSI. Uh, so everything's got to be spot on on a CIS system in order for it not to leak. So what did I do wrong? Um, I didn't check all the washers as I was putting them back together. Um, I just put them back in and what I should have done is cleaned up all the washers as I was putting it back together. So that's what I'm going to do today, is I'm going to pull the, all the washers back out, clean them up by each joint. I'm going to start the fuel pump, work my way up to the fuel filter, uh, both the inlet and the outlet of the fuel filter um, on the fuel distributor. So those are the main places I saw fuel leaks from. And then I'm going to try firing it again and see if this thing will run. After that, I'm going to work on the 75 and put the rear disc brakes on. So that is my that is my goal for this episode and I got a lot of work to do so I'm going to get right to it. So I have everything set up underneath the car here and uh, I'm going to pull this fuel pump out. If you're not familiar with the fuel pump is on this car it is right next to the fuel tank in the back and it is tucked up inside the frame rail between the frame rail fuel tank fuel pump right here so um, I gotta pull this down clamp off this hose so the fuel doesn't leak out undo this fitting down here and then uh, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna clean up all these washers before I put them back in So if you haven't depressurized the system, be really careful when you undo these fittings because uh, fuel will squirt a lot further than you expect. Um, it, uh, 80 PSI is a lot and fuel can shoot three or four feet. So I usually will grab a rag and kind of wrap the, the fitting with a rag before I undo it just to make sure that it doesn't uh, come out and hit me in the face. So the process to clean up these washers is fairly easy. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of skill or special technique or anything like that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to inspect these washers after I wipe them off. See if there's any ridges or anything like that that may have caused a, an issue. And I don't, I can't really see anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of 600 paper. I'm going to wet it down with some, you can use oil, you could use, but I've got this WD-40. I'm going to soak this paper with some WD-40. And I'm just going to sand these things out.
And then the last thing is we'll clean them up with a little WD-40 before we put that uh, junction back together. Then we'll move up to the front of the car. <clears throat> I'm also going to take a piece of paper wrapped around a file, a sandpaper, and I'm going to do both sides of this fitting just to make sure that every one of the sealing surfaces is is uh, clean, free of corrosion, and all that stuff. So. Alright, so first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one. I've got a little plastic tray to catch the fuel that's going to run out of the filter because I already know what's going to happen. So you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see on these washers, but there's quite a bit of corrosion from them being, especially on this one, this one's actually got some ridges on it. So we're going to take them out, we'll clean this thing up, do it again on this side, and then we'll see what happens. So we've got our <clears throat> got everything cleaned up. We're going to put the fuel filter back on, and then we'll try pressurizing the system uh, and uh, see if we have any leaks. So I've had a battery on the charger. I will get a battery and hook it up and see if we have any leaks when we pressurize the system. All right, we got juice. Let's check it out. I left the I left the fuel pump hanging down on this side just to make sure that if there was any drips I could get to it real easy. There's no point in putting it back up there if uh, if it's just going to drip again. And we've got a huge leak back here. So I've got a huge leak in the back here. I'm going to run up to the front real quick and see if we have any leaks up front. Everything looks fairly dry up here, so I figure if we can fix that leak in the back, we should be good to go. Alright, so I think we fixed it. What I ended up doing is taking everything apart and it's leaking from here. It still looks like it's might just be a residual, but 
seems to be holding system pressure right now. And uh, so, I am going to see if this thing will actually fire up, which would be really awesome. That's promising. I don't think the starter's real happy. Just made a weird, like, tapping noise, like something was releasing pressure. I don't know, maybe that was just cylinder pressure. I, I don't know. I'm going to give this give this one more shot here though. Feeling optimistic. Really wants to run actually. It ran for a moment. Well, uh, I think I've reached the point as far as I'm going to get today on the 83 GTI. Uh, <laughs> now I have nothing at the ignition switch, which makes me think that the ignition switch finally died. There's two parts of the ignition switch. There's the tumbler, which is actually what the key operator, the key, uh, and the pins that allow the tumbler to turn and then there's an electrical portion on the back side of the switch and the electrical portion controls a lot of stuff well uh, I was having to wiggle it and kind of make it I try to make it work and then now it's just dead so uh, I'm going to push this thing back outside and pick up another ignition switch and swap that out tomorrow and hopefully um, this thing will actually run. It actually kind of sputtered and fired and, you know, it didn't really run, but it ran on its own with my hand off the key for about 15 seconds, which I'll call a major victory for today. So I'm going to wrap this thing up, clean up the floor, and uh, then I'm going to move over to the rabbit for a little bit. All right, everybody. So now we're back over working on the rabbit. Uh, push the GTI back outside and uh, got to still pick up an ignition switch for that. Uh, so today I'm going to finish up by working on the disc brake rear conversion, um, or rear disc brake conversion. It's really not very complicated at all. It's uh, a really easy thing to swap to rear discs on these cars. Um, any four cylinder, sorry, any four lug rear disc brake swap will work. So like a Passat, uh, Corrado G60, um, Scirocco 16 valve, um, any of those will bolt right to the rear beam on these cars. So it's a really uh, easy way to upgrade. Um, you do have to put some uh, proportioning valves in, in line uh, and uh, I can show you what those look like. So the proportioning valves are these, they just thread into the master cylinder and then your brake line threads into these. Um, you could also manually put in a proportioning valve, but uh, you want to have something to make sure that the rear brakes don't overpower the front brakes. So really easy to convert these cars to rear, di rear discs. You get rid of the drums. The drums work pretty well, but they're just kind of a headache. So. Uh, let's get to it. So, I want to make sure that you undo the the brake line from the back of the uh, wheel cylinder. Um, and you're going to have to bend the brake line. On this car, we're going to redo it. So, it makes it easy to uh, not 
be as concerned about the condition of the brake line. And for those of you that are contemplating this and don't have the tool, a flare wrench will really make it easier to do or to undo brake lines. It doesn't. Uh, you can do it with a regular box wrench, but a flare wrench is the way to really work on brake lines. Now I'm just going to bend this out of the way because the hard lines on this car are going to get redone. If you'll remember, on the early cars, these hard lines run through the body into the passenger compartment and then out the firewall, which is not optimum if you have a brake line leak. Um, it uh, can make it uh, really messy inside of the car. Next step is to take this dust cap off and it just comes off like that. The center of here is a small, or should be, a small uh, cotter pin. Cotter pin comes out. And there's a thing that goes over the nut to keep it from loosening up. And then undo the nut. Slide the drum off. And now all we have to do is unhook the parking brake cable and then there's four bolts Let's see if I can make this easier to see so there's four bolts here that hold the stub axle which is this part to the actual axle once those are released this whole thing will drop down out of the way and since we're going to change the parking brake cables as well, I'm not even going to worry about undoing it. I'm just going to take it. So, since I'm not going to use this cable, there we go. Remember, don't do that if you're going to reuse the parking brake cable. Like if you're going to upgrade to 200 millimeter drums from 180s. Um, so you can get those off of like a uh, like a Mark III Golf or a Jetta. Um, those are a big upgrade for the rear of these cars. But um, the discs take a completely different parking brake cable. So if you're doing a drum upgrade, don't cut the cable. Shall we begin? And easy as that, we have a bare axle in the back. So, so now I'll take this disc brake assembly apart and uh, we'll put it together piece by piece. Alright, so we've got the, the disc brake assembly apart and this is the stub axle and it just bolts on right here. Now it's always a good idea to clean up the old grease, put on some fresh grease, so we're going to do that before we put the disc on, put the rotor on, and then uh, that'll be almost all of the conversion right there.
when you tighten these, you notice the washer behind here floats a little bit. And you want to tighten it up just to where it takes quite a bit of effort to float. Like if you can't move it, it's, it's too tight. And don't forget to clean out your dust cap. Pack a bunch of grease into the dust cap and when you smash it on, it'll fill up the rest of the bearing or give extra grease to work itself through. And don't forget to put your cotter pin back in. Use a new cotter pin. I don't necessarily fill the end of the dust cap with grease, but about half full. And then there's just a quick tap. You could use a block of wood or whatever, but you just don't want to smash the crap out of this thing. And then the only thing really left to do is put on the caliper. Now I'll show you the difference between the brake lines on these. So on the drum brake, the brake line came and turn straight into the back of the um, where the wheel cylinder is on the disc brake it matches up here so if you're doing one of these conversions you could very easily bend a loop into this and hook it into the um, hook it into the soft brake line at the caliper uh, so the only thing left to do at this point would be to uh, hook up the emergency brake cables which hook into this bracket and then activate this uh, this lever here which mechanically operates the caliper but I'm going to do that at a later time when I have the car up in the air um, preferably like all the way up in the air on jack stands and I'm like doing exhaust or something like that that'll be a perfect time to actually upgrade, update the the parking brake uh, cables so that's really all there is to it it's a very quick simple conversion to do uh, it looks better than a drum brake uh, it performs better it dissipates heat better um, I will give a disclaimer on these rotors um, so my friend has a company called Rotor Lab. I'll actually put a link in the description below for him. Um, but he cross drills everything. He does, uh, he chamfers all the holes and cross drills rotors for all kinds of different Audi and Volkswagen applications. Um, so I got these from him. They were on a car. He had been, uh, like, he put them on the car and let them sit for who knows how long. But they're essentially a brand new setup. They've just been sitting on his car for a few months and I think he's going to upgrade to something else so uh, they don't come cross drilled and honestly solid rotors in the back don't need to be cross drilled but they just look cooler so that's why they're cross drilled alright so that is going to do it uh, for this episode I'm going to wrap up the other side but I figured I'd give you guys a quick tip before I go um, you guys are ordering parts for your cars all the time and foam like these pieces of foam that come in the shipping containers they make great like use around the shop for a while pads uh, if you're gonna need if you're gonna kneel on the ground for a while it makes it super comfortable and super cheap because you already ordered it and it's here and you can use it and then when you're done with it you can either recycle it in the foam container or just throw it away but it's a really really cheap way to make things more comfortable around the shop so um, 
the passenger side is done and uh, um, just figured I'd give you guys a, a, a quick shot of it. I got the, the wheel back on and look at how much nicer it looks with the caliper and disc brakes back there versus drums. Huge visual improvement, good braking improvement and uh, uh, easier to get parts for it and a lot easier to work on a disc brake car than it is a drum brake car. So. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. And until next time, get out there and work on something.